Chapter 8 Hit Before You Get Hit Uncle, what kind of persuasion did you use? Morning. Erica, who had approached Leon, was surprised when she learned that Mylene, who had been stubborn, had changed her policy. In the hallway, besides Leon, there are Luxion and Marie. Leon was tilting his head, but Marie had a bitter look on her face. I just persuaded her normally. When Leon said he hadn't done anything special, Marie turned her head away and clicked her tongue. This guy definitely did something. Marie doesn't seem to believe Leon's words. Unable to believe Mylene's change of heart, Erica tries to find out what happened between her and Leon. Please tell me the truth. For my mother, this battle was important to the future of the kingdom. I doubt she changed her opinion easily. Leon raises his chin in confusion as he answers Erica's question. No, I just told her to leave it to me, like normal. Did I say anything else? Jay just that. Regardless of how many words they said to Mylene, they were unable to get her to open up her mind. It is hard to believe that her uncle, Leon, in a previous life, was able to accomplish that in just one day. Although Erica doesn't say it out loud, she thinks Leon's political and military sense is average. To begin with, he grew up in a peaceful rural baron's family. He has never tried to get involved in politics before and is probably not even interested in it in the first place. Erica asks Leon about the future. So how do you plan to end this battle? Then Leon answers without hesitation. Is it obvious? I'm going to go into Rachel and give that holy king a good beating. Erica was speechless and couldn't say anything. This is because Leon is ignoring the issue that a short-term solution would make other countries more wary of the situation. In spite of that, he does not seem to have made up his mind to fight the empire. Marie sympathizes and comforts Erica, who fell silent. I know you're worried, but don't be. At times like this, Aniki will figure things out. And mom? Do you believe in uncle? Marie looks away from Erica while she scratches her cheeks with her fingertips. I believe, or rather, I will. I know all this because we've known each other for a long time, so I kind of know what to expect. From Erica's perspective, Marie trusted Leon. Realizing that further arguing is pointless, Erica asks Leon one last time. Uncle, are you sure it is okay? Leon tapped his chest with his right hand and smiled at Erica. Trust me. After all, I have Luxion with me. Luxion, who is being depended on by Leon, seems amazed. In the end, you are relying on my power, huh? It's obvious. Don't think I can handle the war on my own. Please don't say that with such confidence. Erica, who had been watching Leon and the others, wondered if they could handle such a situation. She had a headache. It was while Erica was on her way back to her room. When Mylene arrived from the other side of the hallway, she was surprised to see Erica. Why is she surprised? With these questions in mind, Erica greets Mylene. Good morning, mother. Why yes, good morning. Erica tilts her head at Mylene's somewhat awkward attitude. Mylene, who had been thorny not long ago, was usually more calm and dignified. She was kind, but at the same time strict. That is why she is troubled in front of her daughter, Erica. No, she was feeling apologetic. What's wrong? Let's talk for a bit. When Erica becomes concerned and asks, Mylene sends the maids who were standing by her side back to talk with Erica alone. Moving behind a pillar in the hallway, Mylene apologizes to Erica. Erica, I was wrong. Mother? What is this apology about? Erica is puzzled, and Mylene has a complicated expression on her face. She's not disappointed in Erica, she's disappointed in herself, and she's wondering how she should explain that to her daughter. As well as the war thing, I thought that Erica would be happy to be tied to Duke Leon Cohen. I thought it would make you happy, I was sure of it. No, it was an assumption. I have Aria. Mylene, who had even considered breaking off her engagement with the Fraser family, looks at Erica and is apologetic. 
I wanted my daughter to be happy, but all I did was impose my own ideals on you. The truth is, I wanted you to find happiness in a political marriage. Mylene was tied to Roland through a political marriage, but it is hard to say that she was personally happy. Even for Roland, he did not end up with the woman he loved. That is what a political marriage is about, and it cannot be made out of respect for individual opinions. However, Mylene wanted Erica to have a happy marriage, despite all of this, apparently. The other party was Leon. But it was all selfish of me. I just caused Erica a lot of trouble without even thinking about how you felt. Erica understood Mylene's feelings and could not blame her. The current situation in the kingdom of Horfold is like walking on thin ice. In such a situation, it would be unusual for Mylene to have to make a decision. The reason she was so forceful was because she couldn't find any other way. I understand that mother was in a difficult position as well. So please don't let it bother you. Erica's words make Mylene's eyes moisten. If you were just a little meaner, I would have raised you to be my successor. However, as a mother, I am happy that you have grown up to be an honest and gentle girl. Despite telling Erica she wasn't mean enough, Mylene was happy to see her daughter grow up. She is glad Erica didn't end up like herself. Seeing Mylene wipe away her tears with her fingers, Erica is surprised. Mother? It's nothing. I just thought Julius and Erica both grew up. I couldn't raise you too well enough, so I was lonely when you were out of my hands. Mylene seems to be crying with joy when she notices that they have grown up without realizing it. She also feels lonely when she sees her children who are out of her reach. Erica has mixed feelings when she sees Mylene like that. She felt sorry for Mylene because she had a previous life. And in this atmosphere, I can't ask her about the important thing. This is not a good atmosphere to ask what happened with uncle. A tourist lake in the Fraser Territory. Benches are provided where you can view the lake. I sat next to Carl, who was sitting there looking at the scenery. May I have a word with you, Your Imperial Majesty? Carl San, His Majesty the Emperor of the Voldanoa Holy Magic Empire turns only a glance in my direction, but immediately looks at the scenery. Despite having been exposed, he was calm. Did you realize that? Or is it Finn Kid? He suspects that Finn leaked the information to me, but I shake my head and deny it. He didn't talk. But I guessed from what I had heard so far and from Finn's attitude. Well, I guess it's just a hunch. I was somewhat suspicious of him, but I didn't expect him to go out of his way to check on Mia-chan. Piecing together Finn's story, I could have guessed that Carlsan was the His Imperial Majesty, a reincarnation like me. But still, isn't the nation's top leadership too light on their footwork? So, is there anything you want from me? I'm going to hit the rational, so can you let me off the hook this time? I also cut out my business while looking at the scenery of the sightseeing spots, and His Majesty the Emperor, who was holding up his cane and placing his hands on it, was in a bad mood. I cannot overlook those who wield the power to destroy a country. Because you are, for a reason, capable of destroying even a nation. I have no intention of destroying them. What? After stretching out, I look up at the sky and say what I really think. I don't want to destroy the country or anything because it would be troublesome and I would be resented. Even though I look like this, I'm a peace-loving person. Luxion is saying from a little distance, you should apologize to the peace-loving people, but I ignore him and talk to His Majesty the Emperor. Is it no good? His Majesty the Emperor begins to ponder. After a few minutes had passed, he opened his mouth. If it could be resolved peacefully, I could let it slide. Peacefully? Even though I am the emperor, I can't do everything as I please. If my vassals consider the kingdom of Horfold a threat and advise me to destroy it, I must listen to them or there will be problems in the country. Is His Majesty the Emperor's position weak? At my question, His Majesty the Emperor gave me an indescribable look. You can have power, but if you run a dictatorship, you're going to have problems. If you have a previous life, you at least understand that, don't you? Well, sort of. You're actually a fool. 
I was annoyed at being called a fool, and when I looked at His Majesty the Emperor's face, for some reason, he looked happy. What are you laughing at? No, it just makes me feel kind of silly to think that I'm being made to feel uneasy because of this guy. This guy? His Majesty the Emperor lets out a deep sigh and talks about the Empire. In the Empire, you considered dangerous. Eh? The Emperor was more surprised to see me surprised. It's a matter of course. If you rise to the rank of Duke in a short period of time and study in the Republic of Arzal, then bring that country to the brink of destruction, don't think that the peace-loving principle will be accepted. Like Finn, the people of the Empire misunderstand me. I should probably correct that. It's not my fault. It was Roland who made him rise in the ranks, and it was the civil war and Rachel's shady scheme that destroyed the Republic of Arzal. Those guys have been operating too secretly behind the scenes. Apparently, His Majesty the Emperor is aware of that as well. Aye, I know. So I thought I'd reprimand you once. Then? I would like to beat the Holy King up as much as you do. They treat the Empire as their old brother and force us to take care of them. Frankly, if it weren't because of you, I would have decided to ignore them this time. Looking at the sullen emperor, the country of Rachel seems to be doing a lot of things. His Majesty the Emperor looks at me and has a complicated expression on his face. But if you overdo it, the empire will consider the kingdom an enemy. I'd like to hear where you draw the line. How much is acceptable? As far as I'm concerned, if the castle is blown up and the country remains, it's safe. When I attempt to make a borderline in my attack, His Majesty the Emperor frowns. You're being told that you have a bad personality, right? Yes, for some reason people often misunderstand me and say that. A few days later, Lickhorn returned to Fraser territory. The reason I recalled Jilk and his team, who had been traveling around the countries, was to end this war in a short term. To do so, we will need a force. When they come to the military port, Julius rushes to Zerk and the others who have come down from the Lickhorn. Well done you guys. We have received news from the royal palace that more and more countries have left the alliance. Julius is overjoyed, and Jilk responds with a smile. This is no big deal. Well, thanks to Leon Cohen, who prepared the Lickhorn and the treasure. It seems that the reason they went to the trouble of borrowing the Lickhorn was to threaten the enemy by boarding it with an Einhorn class. This guy is really nasty. However, unlike Jilk, Brad and the others look very tired. He talks to the dove and the rabbit he holds in both hands. Rose, Marie, you were the only solace I got on the trip. Looking at Greg, his usual habit is that he has a lot of energy, but I saw that he was sitting down. He looks a little worn out. I will never work for Jilk again. Did something bad happen to him? The last one was Chris, but for some reason, this one, his eyes here had lost their highlights and was making a fake smile. Right. Let's take a bath. The first bath. That way, I am sure I can wash away these bad memories. A bath is a remedy for everything. It will heal the wounds in your heart. The three of them are acting strangely, so I ask Jilk. What did you do to push them over the edge? When I asked, Jilk looked at the three of them, put his hand on his forehead, and shook his head. This attitude alone is something that makes me angry. We did have a little adventure. However, we did not challenge the ruins or dungeons, but just went on a few activities in various countries. Apparently, they have done things that can't be said in the countries they have been visiting. You're the type of person who is dangerous if left unchecked. I'm sorry about that. Even so, I have faithfully carried out the duties assigned to me. I clap my hands to get the five of them to look at me while I listen to the fishy words. All right, you guys pay attention. When I call out in a slow voice, the three listless people come toward me in a daze. That scared me a little, but I'm patient now. I realized it wasn't in my nature to make a petty movement, so I decided to give Rachel a shot. I'll have you guys work as well. Jilk's eyes are wide open when he hears what I'm saying. Wait a minute. 
So what about all the hard work we have done? He was entrusted with the task of cutting off the alliance, but it was not necessary if we were to have a short war, not quite, but it would have been less important. I'm sorry. Circumstances have changed. Then Brad, Greg, and Chris collapse to their knees and start crying. Apparently, they had a lot of trouble under Jilk. What was all our hard work for? What about all my, my hard work? Do you have any idea how much I've endured? It's unsightly to see the three bastards crying, so I look at Julius. So, you, Prince, stay back. Wah! And no, it can't be helped. I'm a prince. I should understand my position. UNN. He acts like a good listener, but I can easily predict what this guy will do. Einhorn's strategy room. A circular table, a round table is set up, with a hollow in the center of it and a crystal the size of a soccer ball floating above it. It is said to be a projection device for images, etc., but since the explanation is troublesome, I explained to everyone that it was a magic crystal ball. On either side of me are Luxion and Creer, who assist me. In the operations room, besides the main companions, Finn and the Emperor, Carl San were also present. The five idiots were a bit suspicious of the two of them, but when I told them I had given them permission, they were reluctant to accept it. In such an operation room, a three-dimensional image of the White City was projected on a round table. So we were looking at the images and thinking of a strategy, and Ange let out a sigh of amazement. I like the fact that you stopped restraining yourself, but that's more than I imagined. Livia is very interested in 3D images. She was surprised when she reached out and touched the shrunken white capital, but could not feel it. It's really a picture, an image, isn't it? It's so real, yet it's strange that I can't touch it. Next to a curious Livia, Noel was watching the image and admiring it. There's a floating island on the lake. It's similar to the tourist attractions in the Fraser Territory. As the three of them looked at the three-dimensional images, Julius and the others looked at me with complicated expressions. Still hiding your abilities? It seems that Luxion's science and technology exceeded their imagination, and the five idiots and the other three people who participated, Marie, Kara, and Kyle were also surprised. There is no way I could have put this stuff out in the open so easily. Do you understand how carefully I was moving? When I told them I was restraining myself, Greg looked dumbfounded and doubted me. You weren't very careful with your actions, were you? Still, I was careful about this. With that thing. As we were chatting, Mylene San, who had been invited to the operations room, put her hand on her cheek and exhaled a sigh. Even such a sight is so beautiful that it is picturesque. It's one surprise after another. I hope this is the last one, if possible. In response to Mylene Sant's hope, Creer tells her the cruel truth. Fufu will have more surprises for you, so looking forward to it. I knew the ancient people were better than us, but I didn't expect them to be this good. Mylene let out another sigh at the artificial intelligence created by the old humans. Then Erica asks me. More importantly, the Duke said you were going to strike a blow against Rachel, right? What exactly do you intend to do? As the participants' gazes gathered, I pointed to a castle in the White City. We're going to get into their capital and destroy the magic equipment they have in the castle. When I suggested the destruction of the magic equipment, Luxion and Creer on either side of me nodded repeatedly. Excellent decision. We take away Rachel's trump card while wiping out the magic equipment from the world. For Master, it is a rational decision. Destroying magic equipment, Master knows what to do. I'll do my best to support Master. Both were motivated when they heard that the magic equipment was to be destroyed. The one who is looking at them with a complicated face? It's brave at Finn's side, looking at them with one eye. They don't give a damn about war as long as they can destroy the magic equipment. Finn, listening to Brave's statement, has his back against the wall and his arms crossed. You and I are outsiders, so shut up for now. I want to collect the magic equipment without a core. 
When Brave, muttering with disappointment, closed his mouth, Marie tilted her head. It's all well and good to take away their trump card, but will it end the war? Marie looks at Julius and asks if she is expecting my answer. Perhaps glad to be depended on, Julius begins to quickly describe the path to the end of the war. There is a possibility. If Rachel is attacked in the capital and loses his trump card, it would not be surprising if their will to fight is broken. But the question is, what will other countries think when they see this? Jilk interrupts the conversation. The other countries were also afraid of Leon Kuhn. If he gets any more fame as the Fiend Knight, the Empire may make a move. Jilk took a glance at Finn, probably because he was wary. Greg and Chris were clearly watching Finn's movements with vigilance. Finn understands, too, and shows by his attitude that he has no intention of moving with his arms crossed. Marie looks at me anxiously. A real magic equipment, right? They've been giving you a hard time. Are you really okay? If the Empire attacks us, we'll still win, right? Carl closed his eyes and listened to the reactions of those around him who were worried about what would happen after the Empire moved. I snicker at Marie's opinion. Who would want to go through all that trouble? We'll minimize the damage to Rachel. Mylene San looks a little grumpy when she hears my words, but doesn't say anything. I guess Inch thought it was a strategy one might think of. Are you going to go there and negotiate? Yes, what I wanted to do was negotiate directly. I'd like to meet with the Holy King, who's just sitting in the back, and give him a good smack before we discuss it. Luxion, near my right shoulder, adds to my explanation. Negotiations at gunpoint are called intimidation, not talks. To avoid war. If peace-loving people hear it, they will be amazed. They understood what I wanted to do, but there were still several problems. Brad's cheeks are drawn back. That's fine, but if it's a discussion between countries, Leon has to be delegated full authority. If you negotiate on your own, the royal court will be very upset. If I, as a duke, do not follow the policies of the country and behave as I please, there will be dissatisfaction. Greg points out the problem as well. The border and rural lords have already started preparing to switch sides. If all this gets cleared up before the war starts, what are you going to do later? There is no war, but the war has already begun. Everywhere was in motion, and it was impossible to suddenly be told to stop. Julius is furrowing his brow as he puts his fist to his chin. Neither can I. As a mere prince, I have no right to negotiate. Even the royal court won't recognize me now. Mylene San, who was watching the calm five idiots, shook her head sadly. She took out a handkerchief and wiped her tears. Why couldn't you have shown that intelligence earlier? It is probably too late for anything from Mylene San's point of view, even if they have shown their ability now. Ironically, Julius was now the most suitable for the crown prince. Julius, awkward with his crying mother, speaks to me as if to divert the subject. Should we go back to the palace now? It will take some time, but with full delegation, your operation can be carried out. Then Chris points out other problems while adjusting the position of the glasses with his fingertips. Even if the authority and other issues are resolved, I'm not sure how much strength we can muster. The Einhorn and the Lickhorn are the only available airships for this mission, aren't they? With only two ships, the enemy will swarm in. If we ride in small numbers, our enemies will swarm us, saying they can win if they push us with their numbers. The problem is that there are also a large number of pseudo-magic equipment. The enemy will probably also bring out their trump card, the magic equipment. If that happens, ordinary armor won't be able to fight them. Even if the armors of the kingdom and the Fraser family were deployed, they would be useless in the face of the magic equipments. I look around at Jilk, Brad, Greg, and Chris. I have high hopes for the four of you. Greg scratched his head and had a complicated expression on his face. Well, I'm not saying it can't be done, but the enemy's main forces are in the capital, right? Even if you want to buy time, it's going to be a little tough. Even with armor made of Luxion at the ready, they are outnumbered. 
problems come up one after another, and we are scratching our heads. Just when I thought it would be a good idea to do some damage, Carl-san looks at Finn. Why don't you help them? Finn, who was told by Carl-san, is surprised. Help them? Boy, that's... I don't mind. In addition, I'll go with you. I'm sure I can be of some help. Are you sure? You'll be involved in the kingdom's wars. Carl-san looks at me. If they can really limit the damage and avoid war, it's not a bad idea to lend a hand. Greg looked at me and nodded when he heard that Brave, who had overwhelmed Aragans, was going to join the force. Then, Myling san who had been watching Carl, opened her eyes to see if she had noticed something. Myling san also decides to participate if Carl will join us. Very well. Then I will accompany you and participate in the negotiations. That should shut up the palace officials. Myling san will silence the royal court and this will solve the whole problem. Luck Sion asks me. The conditions have been cleared. You can execute the operation at any time. I raise the corners of my mouth and smile and tell everyone. Then let's go beat up those annoying rational.